Well, thanks, guys, for having me. Um, <clears throat> we don't talk a lot about what we do. Um, kind of busy doing it, so. Um, but it's an honor to be here and to be able to share with you um, 323 La Trobe Street. We are a head contractor. Um, we're not a prefab builder, we're a head contractor, and we've, um, we've been on a mission to industrialize how we build high-rise buildings. Um, uh, our approach um, you know, improves, of course, the speed, the quality, and most importantly, the safety um, in building. We don't have live edges with our system. And I'll show you that a bit later on. Um, we've industrialized the process from digital, uh, the digital, uh, digital adjacent world has allowed us, enabled us to be able to go straight to manufacturing and straight to machines, as we're all talking about this, the same thing today. Um, HBS was applied to a, a La Trobe Street Tower, Australia, Australia's tallest prefab building. Um, I'm going to play a little video because it kind of explains a little bit about who we are. Um, however, I press play. Do I just press play on this? At Hickory, we live and breathe innovation. We see possibilities others don't. Because we believe true innovation starts where convention stops. The future of our industry is going to look very different to what it currently is. I see a hickory which has a very automated approach to its whole process, where buildings are manufactured in factories uh, as parts and are assembled on site. Hickory is unlike any other construction company. We are a head contractor with manufacturing capabilities and technology. We are a true builder that own and run the whole supply chain, we control the risk. I think there's a great deal of scope for transforming our industry into something that looks more like the car sector, the automotive sector. Hickory is leading that process because we're already a vertically integrated business and we're already making the parts that go into our buildings. We're using uh, digital tools and sophisticated manufacturing techniques in order to create these parts which are fundamentally improving the quality and safety of the overall building process. Because we do it in-house through manufacturing, it's a uh, higher quality, more sustainable, significantly safer. We believe in doing things differently and challenging the status quo of everything we do. We understand construction effectiveness, we innovate with world-class solutions, and most importantly, we deliver. We are leading the smart modern construction era here in Australia. Hickory, building innovation. Shows you part of our business and um, the scale it's at. I mean, that factory is six hectares and we've already outgrown it in the last six months. Um, but Hickory, you know, we've got our own crane logistics teams, we run our own structures, we've got about 800 staff, uh, project management, design engineering, customer care, logistics and transport, um, our building system, which I'll talk to you about, um, sink bathrooms, which is a, the only part of our business that we supply to the rest of Australia, so there's probably about 5,000 bathrooms a year. We have a facade business, we design engineer, we make the facades ourselves, we own the uh, facade company. Um, we, inst we install the facades either on our HBS systems or on site, our conventional sites, which are becoming less and less. Um, we also own our, uh, a joinery business where we make our own joinery um, and, and install it right, right down to raw materials. That part, the bottom part, is called Hickory Industries, which is the darker line, which I kind of run. Um, and that's where we make all of our parts and, and the design engineering with the digital world. Um, uh, being self-performing, as Michael said, my brother in the, um, uh, in the video there, he's, he's, he's allowed us to, to be able to do this. I mean, we've got 800 staff, they're really expensive in Melbourne, um, and they're awesome. Um, but, you know, we, 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 their safety is, is the utmost importance to us. Um, and, uh, and, and to get productivity out of them on a, on a construction site today is difficult, and the only correlation be product, between productivity for high-rise buildings that we have is vertical transportation. So the less people you have, the faster you're gonna get them up there and the more productive you're gonna be. Um, we believe strongly, um, and I think we're all on the same page, that um, uh, 
systems should not dictate designs of buildings. We don't procure buildings that way. Uh, we were in the volumetric world a little, a little while ago and, and got out of it for that reason. Um, our buildings need to be created and architects create buildings for the best use for the community, the space and the developer and yields. Um, and we as, we as businesses need to have systems that link that, that chain together to be able to deliver uh, whatever the architect needs. And the Hickory building system builds every single type of concrete slab. It does PT, beam and deck, flat um, uh, um, conventional decks, um, uh, and all types of things. So it's adopted to any design. This building um, is, uh, which is 323 Latrobe Street, it's 44 levels, single basement. Um, we, we sprung off level two, uh, which is a transfer level, um, which we did from basement to level two. We did conventionally, which took the longest time, pretty much. It was um, six months just to get out of there. We had a 19-month contract, 200-odd um, apartments. It wasn't big. It was a very small footprint, very tight, um, and we finished it on time, of course. Typically in Melbourne, uh, the contract of 44 levels is around 27, 28 months. Regions around the world are all very different. We're actually really, really quick. Um, uh, our, our system comes, our floors come with the facade on it. We don't have screens. On this building here, we had no loading bays. Um, it was actually, we installed the floor, we put the bathrooms in, the plaster in, in packs, and uh, let our fit-out guys go below. Um, we our concrete for shear walls was actually sprayed on this building. We used shotcrete. We don't use it anymore. It's actually, it was really successful, but too expensive. Um, uh, but it was extremely successful, and we used our shotcrete to do our shear walls. Um, and you'll see that. I'll talk through the other video of this building going up. One of the biggest challenges we had on this building was that the, the, <laughs> the road, there was trams. We've got trams in Melbourne. Trams and bikes, lanes, and all the rest of them. The council wouldn't allow, us, um, uh, wouldn't allow us to work at night. They just don't like people working at night. We said to the council, we make less noise than the ambient noise of the city. And they said, no, you don't. They said, no, we do. Here's the proof. Anyway, so they said, we'll, we'll give you a trial, because the government kind of got involved and said it was really important. So we started installing the building at night. It took us about four hours to do a floor. Um, anyway, we finished the whole building. And then they came back to us and said, this is the first building in Melbourne ever to be done that we didn't have one complaint. And no, mind you, before they gave us the permit, neighbours were just going bananas. Um, I'll go to the next slide. This is the video. I'll talk through this, um, this video. And this shows how we're constructing it at night, um, I think. Boom. Oh. There you go. Here's another one. So, um, we, everything goes in, the, the walls, we don't do st any steel anymore, um, but you'll see the modules will come, they'll have the, the Rio bar, rebar, you guys call it, um, already on the module with the splice bars done. Um, it actually shows exactly how much the noise is. Also, there's, there's a staircase, the cable trays done for the shafts. This is how loud we were. And you'll notice when you look, when you, you'll see a screen there where you'll see us, you know, there's a bathroom pod there all wrapped. There would be plaster, fire pipe, whatever we needed to load on that floor was done previously. Our system has developed significantly further than this um, uh, uh, over, the, over the years. Um, you see the outside precast is the outer, outer skin of the, um, uh, the shear wall. And the inner skin was sprayed against it uh, with the rear already on it. We can locate our modules with a facade on it within two millimetres. We did it on 44 levels, um, and we've done it on another 44 level building, 44 is the number at the moment, building uh, just recently, and we're doing a 60 level building right now. Um, and, and of course, all that facade came with it that you saw on, those, on, those, um, uh, on the video. The system now, there was limitations to that. The steel was a pain. Um, so we wanted to get rid of steel and go back with the full concrete, which we do now. Um, our system, uh, 
is now there's a we don't have any we don't leave anything behind um, your normal concrete building whether it's pt or whatever it is um, our system comes with a, a temporary propping system that locates within a couple of millimeters the facade gets loaded on the in the factory um, goes out and the job dictates what parts we use, whether we're using bathrooms, we're going to put pod bathrooms in there, whether we're going to do pod kitchens in there, because we don't have formwork. Um, and today on, on our system, we don't, except the, this next building, uh, which is just a tricky building. But now, in our, in the, the one after this one is going to be a, um, a hotel where we don't even pour any concrete on site. Um, we've got a stitch joint that doesn't need any concrete, it's a grout joint, uh, which is pretty awesome. Our floors are poured upside down, so our floor quality is plus or minus two millimetres, which is our beds. Um, our set downs are in there, our fire collars, our penetrations, everything off the BIM model goes straight into, in, into our cast beds. And our, our bed's a little bit different than most panel, panel yards. Um, so it's a, just, a, it's a heap of, it's just a, 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 a lot of parts, um, interchangeable parts, with sheer walls, bathrooms. And most importantly, our core is poured four levels below our lead deck. We have decoupled the core from our lead deck, which means you're as fast as your weakest link and we're as fast as putting in modules. We put between three to five modules in an hour. So there's a 600 square metre building that you'll see next, which is an amazing building. Uh, and we install that, um, that floor in about two and a half hours. Um, we believe in uh, innovation multiplies. We don't believe it's one solution. The building dictates what parts we use. But you know what, I put HBS on a job, I don't need screens on the outside, I don't need handrails. Uh, my men are safe, my floors are flat. Um, uh, we then, now this next one is a, is a hotel that we're doing where we've got uh, a double bathroom that goes in place on the top deck before we put the next one on. It's got the stacks, the MEP, the under slab roughings, everything's done, the party wall's done. And we, we've got a grout connection from the floor above that connects it all together. People don't even go above the pod. Um, the, the, the one next to it is a kitchen. Um, and we, it's like, it's, for us, one plus one, if I use two of those, doesn't equal three to us, it actually, or two, it equals like 10. You know, it's, it, 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 it um, it's, makes a big difference to our project as a head contractor. We use, we use the same design team, but we just give them different tools and we've got a very different process. Our process is more linear. Um, we call, we give uh, our design team just a plug-in um, uh, uh, Revit model, parametric model. We design, this building here is uh, Collins House, 11 metres wide, 40 metres deep, goes up 15 levels, hangs over the neighbour's building by four and a half metres as a glass box, bait smart, awesome building. Um, and goes up to level 57. We're installing this building right now. We can only do one floor a week um, from 15 to 20, and then we'll go to our, we can go to a sequence as fast as we want, which will be two to three floors a week. Um, and that's the, the dark parts is how it comes. Um, the design team runs their normal process. We give them what we call the dumb smart model, because it's Revit. Then um, they, do their, they do their design. Um, the, our process is more linear. I'm going to make this really quick because there's a little bit more to go through. The process is very linear. The last step, seven to ten, it goes into the manufacturing, uh, which we use Inventor. Um, we, my first building, 323 Latrobe Street. If anyone wants to talk about BIM and digital, uh, digital world and how, it, how what are the benefits, first building at 323 Latrobe Street, 600 shop drawings, lots of steel, drove us bananas. Said, we can't do this anymore. Parametric modelling, invested some time and money into it. Um, next building, and that was only 45 million, it was like a test job for us. The next building was 90 million, 800 bed student accommodation, we just finished now in um, 50 Latrobe Street. Uh, did our parametric modelling, got all that on the way, we used it on that project. So the first one was 1.3 million we spent in wages to design and chop draw, because it's millions of drawings. The next building, which was double the, the size, we spent 60,000. So parametric modelling was really, really good. Um, our smart model from the Revit model, we dump it into Inventor. It's, a, uh, uh, and it's got all its uh, points, like a CAD CAM system um, within, within our parameters. 
It automatically spits out a shop drawing. We do have a PFC that's at the front of ours, um, out of this on, the, on, on our system. Um, this goes to the floor for the men. The PFC goes straight to an NC, as an NC1 file to our steel guy. We've already negotiated all our rates. Um, it then spits out, you know, we pay $5 for a cut and $2 for a hole or whatever it is. That then goes on to, um, uh, that goes, does all our ordering. I don't even have a procurement office anymore. My one designer that does about a half a dozen towers for me per year does also my procurement. Um, we then have to induct our staff. Um, our, my, we've got lots of builders. They're really hard to change. So we use VR. I love it. We, I live on VR. Um, we, we animate it. Um, we take it through. Um, uh, we animate the, 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 the process that we walk through with the guys. I don't know why that's not going. Oh, bummer. Oops. Anyway, we will get back on that one. How do we get back? Oh, there you go. Um, thank you, guys. Uh, we animate it. We take them through. We, we pre-cut the formwork. Uh, our, our system comes with propping systems, like a systems formwork in between. On this particular job only, because that module that's going in there is cantilevered four and a half metres over the neighbour's building. Um, amazing. If anyone's in Melbourne, you've got to come and see this. It's really cool. Um, the formwork goes up prior to the modules go in. There's no, there's no fall protection. Only one guy gets up there to de-rig it. Um, and the facade is on the module, as you can see, and goes in, in exactly in its place. We control the process. Um, we've got our time and motion studies are so accurate now because we've done so many of them. Um, uh, that all, every single part, stillage, how the stillages work, where they walk around, through VR we can be able to work that through and induct our men. The VR is not for our clients. We do no animation for clients. We don't do it for bids. We reckon it's... We don't do it. Anyway. Um, but we do, it, we do it for our men. My rigger to go there and say, George, last job, didn't like that. That was a problem. We've got to fix it. Some lessons learned. Um, and we've, we've adopted a lot of new things and moving exponentially. Uh, next phase now is actually we've worked out because of our new details is to fully automate our verticals and horizontals through kind of existing technology um, and building another plant of another six hectares um, uh, to, do, to do all these parts for us um, automated. So we are, we're at robotic stage right now. Um, I have two minutes. Anyway. So, and we, uh, our precast columns, which is also done in our factory too. Um, this, this building, I wasn't talking about it, it's, it's 11 metres and it comes out f um, four to, um, another four and a half metres. So it's got a, um, a two third backspan. So it's a very well balanced building. Um, very much a glass box, beautiful building. Um, it was originally a 40 month contract, 40 to 40 months with, the, with, with everyone in town. Um, we signed a 29-month contract. I reckon we're going to finish it in about 24. So it wasn't feasible to even be built um, in a conventional methods um, uh, because of our technology. We're able to deliver it a lot faster and much higher quality. Uh, we will do, we're only doing one floor a week now because we, we're not allowed to do any more because the, the cantilever just still gets enough strength in the building. But we will do, like I said, two to three floors per week on this building, um, fully loaded. Um, we're not using bathroom pods in this building because the building doesn't, dicta doesn't, need, to, doesn't need it. It's, um, it's, it's better building them conventionally. Just because you've got your parts and lots of parts, the building dictates what parts you use. We do not change the documents at all. The building was designed that way. We've procured that way. We've just built it different. We've built the same spatials, but we've just put it together differently. Um, in Melbourne, that's how it works. A lot, most contracts are DNC. I only have one minute, so I'm going to jump this one. Can I jump the next one? Um, our system... <sighs> That last building that we did at 323 Latrobe Street, we took 70% of the transport away from the city. We used 90% less waste. We, were, we had a facade on our live edges. We are the safest high-rise system, unless someone can show me anything else, the high-rise system in the world because we don't have live edges. Um, it's um, uh, our quality because we pour 
um, upside down. Our quality of everything that we do out of the factory that we were talking about before is the highest quality possible. Um, it's incredible. Um, and we reduced the community impact. Funny thing is, after that building at 20 seconds, the council said, all right, every building that you do from now on, you have to build it at night. Well, before they wouldn't let us. Anyway, it's councils. And then we go, we don't, we don't want to build it at night. No, 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 no. We, we can't do it because we have to pay double time for everyone, so it's more expensive. So, and our system is so adaptable now, um, uh, we, can use, we can make our modules any size we want. Anyway, well, thank you. I did that. See you on time. Thanks, guys. Thank you.